All right, good afternoon and good nerve Shabbos, everybody. It's Rabbi Kolakowski, Kaplanza Rebbe, here with uh, my insights. I watched an di- interesting video from a much larger YouTube channel, Doug to Naples, I think is the name, in exile. That's been his uh, his uh, hashtag there uh, for a little while. That he's in exile. I'm not sure what he's in exile from, but he's in exile. And then the video he put out today was welcoming President Donald Trump into exile. And it gave me a time to pause and reflect because that is what's going on right now, right? It's a a time of exile, a time of Golos, as we would say, because Golos is not merely in uh, in real estate and geography. It's a state of mind and a state of being, and it's a metaphysical state, not a physical state. And for some reason, uh, the spirit moved me, as we would say. You know, I could feel... uh, compelled uh, the way that some of my friends who are some of my best friends who are Mekubalim um, would say uh, that there's a certain compulsion when it comes to giving out a message and which is really what's going on here a- every time I speak the Rabbi Shalom runs the world and that includes what you're hearing right now whether or not what I'm saying is by divine providence or not, or by Bechira Chavshis, by by uh, by free will, uh, or by Hashkocha Protest, by by divine providence, the fact that you're hearing it, a hundred percent, is by divine providence. That's a basic belief, uh, certainly in Hasidic Judaism. It doesn't mean that's anything special about me. I'm just I'm just another guy. But at the Molech Lord's Kavoide, the whole world's filled of God's, of God's glory and God's uh, divine providence. And so, too, all the events going on right now that are so difficult for us to deal with are events of divine providence, as was our Golos. And I'm reminded, and I wrote a comment to Dr. Naples' uh, channel where he makes much shorter videos than I do, and that's probably why he has so many more subscribers. I think he just celebrated 300,000 subscribers, and I wish him well, even though I'm jealous, but there's Kinesai from there, so it's okay. Uh, this is going to make me work harder. I don't want to take anything away from him, Chas Vashon. But anyway, the, um, I, the comment that I put there, which, of course, there are many comments, so it's bound to be lost, but... Uh, again, by divine providence, someone might read it. Was that the Dalai Lama once called a group of rabbis to Nepal, to his, uh, I guess it's called Dar Sala, is his community there, where he's in exile, because not not that far away from Tibet to Nepal, they're, they're neighboring countries, but nonetheless, he's in exile. And he wanted to learn from the rabbis, from the Jews, what's the secret of survival in exile, because we've done it for 2,000 years, and we did it before, and we'll do it again, right? And what's the secret of survival in exile? And, uh, you know, the different versions of the story that I've heard, and I didn't hear, you know, any of the answers that were brought out, but I have my own answer. And it goes back to how the this current exile started, meaning this current Jewish exile started. There were different camps, and we can find three camps. Two went extinct, and one survived to this day, and everything that the Jewish world has to this day is including the things that we disagree with that essentially came out of this, meaning even those things that are heretical, they're not heresies that so much grew out of the old heresies, but uh, were either in reaction to trying to return to old heresies, or in some way, whatever was preserved in the Jewish world 
I'm not talking about any lost tribes, but in, in among the Jews, among the, the people who came from the kingdom of Judah, not the kingdom of Israel, because um, we don't know about them. Uh, we could say we know whatever, but that's neither here nor there. That's not what we're talking about here. The everything reform, everything, all these things, they 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 sprouted out of rabbinical Judaism, right? Anyway, this is the point that I'm saying here is like this. You know, even when even when they're reacting and, and turning against it, they're coming from it. That's what I'm saying. This was the one that saved us to continue. And again, it's also by divine providence. But it's also a history lesson, right? And there are lessons from history that are religious lessons of history, didactic lessons. Anyway... So you had the the zealots. The zealots wanted to make war. The zealots wanted to, and the zealots ideologically were not anti-rabbinical in the way the Sadducees were. Some were, some weren't. In, meaning, as far as the tradition, but they went against the rabbinical authorities, and they were called baryonim, just tough guys, you know. And so the Baryonim wanted to burn everything down. And they even destroyed the food, that there would have been enough food for the people to survive in Jerusalem during the siege, and they burnt it all to compel the people to go and fight and not to stay. And they destroyed everything. And, <coughs> and they're gone. Although there's some theories that they actually got very big, but we're not going to talk about those right now. I'm even young. The other group for the Sadducees, the Sola Scriptura crowd, the literalist crowd, not originalist, but literalist. And there's a difference between literalism and originalism. And they were connected. Their whole thing was the cult of the temple. And that's all they had, and that's all they wanted, and that's all they cared about. And when the temple was destroyed, they had no religion left, and so they went extinct. And then you had the the rabbinical, the ones, the the heirs to the to the scribes and Pharisees, the rabbinical Jews, Rabbi Yechonim and Zakkai. What did he say? Not only that, but he showed respect. Perhaps undue respect to Vespasian, Vespasian, and he and and he um, and, and and he. What do you call it? And he. Uh, and he made Judaism survive. Judaism is here today because of Rabbi Yechonim and Zakkai. Of course, it's because of God, but God used Rabbi Yechonim and Zakkai to be the tool to keep Judaism alive. And that's that way of Tainli Yavna Vechachameha, give me. Jamnius, I think is Jamniza, I think is the Greek name of Yavne and her and her sages. And we'll make Judaism a portable religion. And he and he did all these things, Zeichel Mikdash, and um, we were able to survive. And our religion continues to this day. And the truth is the, the whole thing, the whole world survived from this. So that's the story. You know, a peaceful, respectful manner of wisdom. That's how we're going to continue.
And so these zealots, who are a handful of people who only made and did a couple hundred dollars worth of damage, they didn't do anything really major. Um, but the but but among them, they had victims and they had martyrs. Uh, and uh, th- those people are being vilified, but they they're the zealots, they're the dummies. That's they don't represent us. And but we have to find a path, and I'm not saying what that path is. That's going to take a long time, but a path of wisdom and respect. The path of Rabbi Yechonah and Zakkai. That's how we're going to survive this exile. Otherwise, we're going to disappear in the dustbin of history. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. We'll see you later.